Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Uh, I'm in a bit of a different setup today. As you can see, uh, I'm not in my usual office space. Um, some of my team is, is off on holiday today. So uh, I'm down grinding it out on the work, workshop warehouse floor uh, with everyone else. So uh, <laughs> um, we've got loads of questions today. Some great ones to get through. Um, yeah. Um, Looking forward to having a look at these. Uh, we've got quite a few. We'll get to them in just a minute, but don't forget if you like the videos that I provide to you free of charge uh, <laughs> and you'd like to keep them coming, uh, don't forget to support us by shopping at kendostar.com. Okay. Uh, and sorry if I'm like looking all over the place. The camera's there and the text is there. So sorry. Uh, yeah, kendostar.com. That's where I am. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> obviously what pays for everything. Um, and that's what keeps these videos coming. So, uh, and yeah, it's also amazing stuff. And of course I'd say that. So if you don't believe me, check out our ratings because we're the best rated online. Right. Let's get to these questions. Uh, hi Andy, do you have any tips for making a shinai last longer? I recently got into Kendo and picked up a pair of identical doorbody shinai. Uh, I got doorbody ones because I have very large hands uh, and these particular uh, shinai came with an extra large oval scar. I sanded an oiled one when I got them and I've used it for about a month practicing four hours a week. Uh, the strike face was starting to show tiny splinters after the last practice. So I sanded them down, uh, sanded them away and oiled again. I'm not sure how long it'll last in total, uh, but a month to splintering seems kind of short for a nice and madaki shinai. Is there anything I can do to extend the life? Uh, as a side note, I can't get the Skagawa off for the life of me, so I uh, haven't been able to rot rotate the staves yet. Thanks. Okay, so yeah, obviously this is a common problem, um, and there are some things you can do, and there are some things that are easier than others in terms of ex uh, extending the life of your Shinai. Um, now, you said that you're new to Kendo, so your Shinai will get better, will will last, start to last longer as you gain more experience because. Part of it is massively connected to the way you actually make the strikes. And as your ability improves, as you get better tenuchi, the actual striking action, um, and particularly with using the left hand more, you'll find that the shinai tend to last longer. Also, of course, door body means that the, the body of the shinai near the hands is wide, and then they usually go to quite a fine tip, and they do suffer from lower durability than, say, an all-purpose type shinai, or um, like a koto style shinai. So there's that as well. Now it depends how bad you're talking about as well. There's not a lot you can do about the fact that it's going to splinter. Um, at the end of the day, you're striking it and it's just bamboo against another person's armor. It doesn't really matter if it's like a nice bamboo or a cheap bamboo, whether it's like a madake or something like that doesn't massively affect the durability. When you're paying more for higher grade shinai with higher grade bamboo, um, yes, actually, I, I take it back a little bit because if you get the really cheap bamboo, uh, like some of the really cheap shinai out there where they've just sort of thrown together what they have, yeah, that stuff doesn't last very long. But once you get past that sort of midpoint and you start getting between the sort of midpoint into really expensive stuff, it's not so much the durability that changes. It's more the balance and the actual craftsmanship of the shinai itself. Um, and some of that can help in terms of um, durability, especially if you like, if you look at something like, um, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, especially as you said, you just started out in Kendo. I don't want you to go too down a sort of rabbit hole of specialized Shinai at the moment. But like, there's like a, what's called Tatemen Kezuri is a way of shaving the Shinai. And that's a more expensive way of shaving it. We've got one on Kendo Star called Kabuto Wadi. Uh, and it means that they can shave it quite thin, but keep it quite thick at the same time. So you get a bit of extra durability out of that, but it just costs more. Um, so there is that, but you know, don't assume that because it's a Madake Shinai, you're going to get more durability out of it than a sort of mid-price shinai. So that's definitely worth taking on board. And at the end of the day, it's all natural materials. You could spend a, a lot of money on a very expensive shinai, and I've done this before myself, and it could break after two or three uses, all right? So it's kind of part and parcel of it. None of us know because they're not, they're not obviously made by machine. Even the cheaper shinai are put together by hand as it is. But when I mean that, I'm, I'm talking more about the material itself is, uh, is natural. So there is a bit of a hit and miss thing. I've got Shinai that, I mean, I don't break Shinai often, um, to be honest. I'll, I'll get, when I'm normally practicing, um, sort of, yeah, similar sort of four to six hours a week, maybe more. Um, 
six to ten hours a week probably actually i'd say in a in a in a good week um, <laughs> um i'll probably only break a shinai every three to four months um which i think is good going um actually uh but it depends sometimes they'll break after one month sometimes they'll break after six or nine months um and then if there's a situation like we've had last year then you know i haven't broken shinai in like 18 months so <laughs> is that as well uh, about getting the Tsukagawa off I think I talked about this in the last last Kendo rant video about how you can get the Tsukagawa off when you're trying to pull take the, the Tsukagawa off don't try and just pull it off like this when you un, obviously untie it <laughs> um but untie it all just pulling it like this you're not going to get the kind of um well you're not going to get what you want out of it it's better if you can get a piece of rubber or rubber gloves or something that'll help get you more some grip on more grip on it. If you put it on a desk or a table like this and then push it down this way, you'll probably have more luck uh, getting it off the off the shinai. So um, give that a try as well. Of course, it's always going to be harder with those big grip shinai. Uh, so yeah, the put on by machine. So it's a bit of a tough one. Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. Is there an algorithm uh, one can use to determine the best time to go for one of your deals? Uh, would you recommend just buy ASAP as to not risk miss missing out? <laughs> so I replied on this one. I said it's always a good time. Um, <laughs> and I know uh, I did say that jokingly, but um, OK. If something is on offer or on sale at Kendo Star, it's unlikely that it's going to get... Um, cheaper by another deal in the future if that if that makes sense we have a sort of bottom line at what we can go on at most with most of our product and that changes from month to month depending on our like in terms of which products they are um depending on our sort of supply chain and our stock and stuff like that um the deals that we've managed to secure with our workshops, all that sort of thing is what affects what we can put on offer every month. What you'll find is some of our ones, we have quite a consistent um, flow of stock and a quite a, a consistent um, like running deal with, with some of our workshops. So some of them you'll see on offer quite, on offer quite regularly um, or almost consistently um, or, or they'll sort of go through different types of offers. But what you won't find for the most part is we'll put something on offer at say 20% off this month and then next month it's at 30% off. Um, the only time we've done that is uh, at the start of the year when a lot of things changed. Um, but generally, <clears throat> if something's on offer now, it's pretty much at the best deal that you can get it at. Of course, sometimes, you know, it, it might go on offer again in the future, but it's likely to go on at the same or a higher price. Um, so if you see something that's on offer, it fits your needs, it's what you want. And like I say, it's on offer now. Now is a good time to get it because it's unlikely that it's going to go on offer again later at a better deal. I can't say that. 100% across the board. Of course, it depends. All sorts of things happen in this business, right? So that depends as well. Um, but, I mean, in all honesty, I don't see us... I know we had a bit of a price drop at the start of the year, like I said, because things changed with our tax implications because of the UK's exit from the European Union. Um, so we passed that on, right? Um, but obviously things change um, and I can't control everything. But... Yeah, um, it, if you see something you want and it's on offer now, now's the time to get it, all right? Because that offer might go away. And it might stay. It might be there next month, but it might not. <laughs> all right? That's all I can say on it. Next one. <laughs> Eating before Kendall. I know we'll puke with a big meal um, or even too much water before training, uh, but sometimes I get so busy with work that I eat nothing after lunch before nighttime keiko. Eating dinner in the time between work and keiko is nauseating. Is there some sort of snack that makes you feel nicely full uh, while giving you enough energy? Well, um, hmm. I've never felt nauseous for having too much water before training. I, I recommend taking as much water on as you can. Um, before training especially if you train quite hard or in a hot country but um i'm not saying it doesn't happen uh, <laughs> but um i i hardly ever eat anything before my evening cake or because i don't have time all right um like even my dojo my own dojo that i run um when there's practice is 
a good 45 minutes away from where I live. Um, Kendo Star is another 30 minutes away from where I live. All right. And the door, my daughter is on the other side. Yeah. So I finish work in the evening. <clears throat> I go to my house to pick up my kids. Um, and my wife, uh, and then go to the dojo. I don't have time to eat before that. So generally, um, and, and if I'm not practicing in my dojo, I'm practicing a different dojo, then I've got a longer drive to go, right? Because my dojo is the closest one to me. Um, so I generally don't eat before Keiko. And if I, f if I feel like oh, I need to eat something, then yeah, I'd only eat something very light. Um, like, I think the best thing you could eat, if you can get hold of it, like, simply and quickly and easily, if you've got time, is like a banana. Um, bananas are good. <laughs> I think I often take bananas to Shiai when I used to compete in Shiai. Um, because they're, uh, you know, they, they give a lot of energy and they're, uh, you know, um, they're not, like, full of sugar. I mean, they are probably with, like, fruits. and I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist. But they're not like a Mars bar or something. If you don't have a chocolate bar, I should say, for people that aren't knowing what I'm talking about. But, you know, they're not like a candy bar. <laughs> I've never said that word before. Um, so, yeah, um, probably something like that uh, would be better. Or like if, if you if you really wanted something like a sandwich or something like that, you know. Yeah. Hi, Andy. I've seen Haraiwaza taught as an upward sweep from below the opponent's shinai with a twist of the hand so that the sh uh, Shinogi makes contact, knocking the opponent's shinai off the center line. I've also seen it taught as a sideways slap using a scissor type action with the hands, uh, the right hand being the fulcrum, sort of like this, yeah. Um, both seem to uh, satisfy the meaning of harai or barai, uh, but which is correct, uh, especially in the realms of kihon keikoho. Thanks. Okay, so that's a really good question. I like it. So first, let me talk about harai and barai. Barai is the same as harai, same kanji. It's just when you connect it to another word, um, sometimes the ha becomes ba because it's a similar letter in the, it's, it, it's a, it's a functional thing in the Japanese language. All right. So sometimes you hear about ashibarai, which is when you foot sweep. And that means to do harai with your foot, ashibarai, um, for example. Um, so, <clears throat> right, where do I start? So harai, harai or harao is to hit the opponent's shinai. Whether you do it from the side, whether you do it from below and hit upwards, or you do from above and hit downwards, all of those fall into the realms of harai and can be described as harai. Um, none of them are right or wrong. They're all fine, okay? They're all correct, yeah, uh, in con the context of a shinai, all right? You can use this one from the left to right. That's quite useful. You can use from below upwards. Obviously, you make a big movement and you, you're kind of gambling, all right? So it's about how much you can use your wrists effectively, bam, like this, or uh, upwards like this, or this way as well. Um, some people will call this harayage. Harayage means to, um, like, a, a bash upwards, strike upwards, and then harai otoshi is to do downwards. Um, and then and if you're doing left to right, then or right to left, people will probably just say harai. <laughs> but all of them are fine. They're all acceptable and none of them are wrong. All right. Um, it's not like that. But when we come into the context now of the bokuto niyoru kihonwaza keikoho, that's the uh, basic forms using a bokuto. It's like a kind of, it's like the kata, but... Um, it's a different set of forms that are more similar to Shinai Kendo. And uh, Kihon number three is uh, Harai Men. And the Zen Kennen's official, the Old Japan Kendo Federation's official instruction on that does say Harai Age, okay, using the shin, uh, Shinogi. So you have to, uh, it is a slight upwards strike, all right? But don't drop the shin, you don't want to drop the sword first and then strike up from your Kamai, pam, upwards this way. But not massively either. It's like, as you upswing and then do your men strike, okay? But they're all okay in the uh, realm of using the shinai, uh, but when you go to your bokuto ni or kihon as a keikoho, it is a, it is an upwards motion. Uh, next one, I saw your kata video from a few months ago, uh, and I was wondering if you started thinking about the remake you were mentioning in it. So I think this is the one where I did like a little analysis video of a, a kata informal demo that I did with my wife at our dojo um, last year. Um, 
And there were a few mistakes that we made in it. <laughs> and I picked them up in the video and I've probably said that I'll, I'll make it again. Yes, I want to make a proper cutter video and I will make a proper cutter video. It's not possible at the moment in the UK um, because I can't, I don't have access to a, a dojo or a space that I can do it in. Um, so, uh, and that's because of the current restrictions that are in place because of, you know what. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah. In a couple of months, um, we'll, we'll try and put something together. And I'll, I'll start making some more videos too. So fire more suggestions at me what you'd like me to make videos of because in the next few months, things start to open up here and I'll, I'll be able to get onto making some more. Okay, uh, what are the good, correct places to get calluses on your hands from doing stability and practice? Uh, good question. Um, so uh, on your left hand, uh, it's often, if you're doing things correctly, you'll get them below your ring finger and your little finger. All right. Um, that's why I tend to get them. I also tend to get them here at the base of my uh, index finger on the top. Yeah. Uh, and I get them on the this side of my thumb as well. Uh, and a little bit, um, a little bit on the right side as well. All right. Um, and probably a little bit in a similar area. But not, not so much, to be honest. Um not so much. They're the main places, all right? Um, some people will say just here, but actually, no. Um, I think I think it's normal to get here and to get here as well. What I always find as well is it takes me about... Uh, this, one's a, this one's an interesting one. It's, it's, it's part of a 1002. But this is... Um, this, this one here, um, it probably takes me about like six to eight weeks to wear a hole in all of my kote here. <laughs> it's only a little tiny hole like that, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me. Um... But it doesn't matter what I do. I always wear that through pretty quickly. Um, what's the best video highlight document video documentary, uh, in your opinion, that might draw one's interest to kendo? So if you're talking about a video that would be like something you want to show to someone that doesn't do kendo or, you know, that might get someone interested in kendo. Um, it's hard to say. Um, there's loads, there's loads of great ones on YouTube, but I probably stick with one of the documentary type ones. Um, it's hard to find them in English, but like the, the national geographic ones or the NHK ones, anything, if, especially if it's got sort of English going along with it. Um, I think they do a really good job of, um, sort of presenting Kendall, um, often following experts, um, but, you know, designed to be presented to a, a lay person, someone that doesn't know about Kendall. So I'd probably look at something like that. And then also uh, the video uh, called Five Things to Know Before You Start Doing Kendall by The Kendall Show. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on taking notes or keeping a training journal or blog to keep track or note of your progress and thoughts? Uh, I sometimes have thoughts about Kendall or Kendall related things and just end up ranting to myself can't be healthy right so i was thinking about doing something along those lines i think it's a fantastic idea lots of people do it it's a very very common practice um to keep keep a journal or um a blog um or just a log <laughs> if you don't want to put it online um of your cake or after each cake it doesn't have to be long it's not something i've ever done all right i'm I, it's not something I've ever done. Maybe if I'd had, I'd have got better faster or I'd be better than I am now. I don't know. But it isn't something I've ever done. But I've often done it via this channel in a funny old way. All right. So often the things I talk about or express in these videos, um, not so much the Kendo Rant ones, but, you know, in a lot of the videos I put out, they're often sort of reflections on my own Kendo as well. So, um, yeah, I guess I'd do it in that way. But yeah, um, if, if it's something that you, you're you inclined to do, I definitely encourage it. And I do think you'd, you'd, you'd benefit from it, you know, um, even if you even if it's just getting out and writing it down. And then even if you don't look back on it, obviously, I think you probably benefit from looking back on it as well. But even if you didn't, I think probably getting it out. What you don't want to do, though, what you what I would advise. Right. And this is coming from somebody <laughs> This is coming from someone that doesn't write a, a journal. Uh, but this is how I have analyzed my kendo coming up uh, over the years and how I still go ahead doing it, right? Is what you mustn't do is just make a log of the things you're not happy with, all right? Don't just sit there and, oh, well, my, my left leg is too slow or, um, you know, I can't fix my tenuti or I can't do this, you know. Do write them, 
But what I would recommend is every time you write something, it doesn't have to be every time, but you know, if you write write something that you need to improve or a negative point, um, but write something positive as well. As well all right, you must do that. It's it's important. All right. And it's something that in Japan they miss a lot because the Japanese way is just to say the bad stuff. But you need to know what you need to improve, what you need to do better. But you also need to know what you need to repeat yeah, and do again. So you need to recognize both this, both equally as important. All right. So whether you're looking back on videos of yourself, whether you're making a journal or a log or something like that, make sure to make a note of what you need to improve and what you're not happy with. But make sure as well to pick out something, at least one thing or a few things that you think, yeah, OK, I'm happy with how that went. I'll try to do that more. Yeah. Um, and you'll de you'll definitely get better if you do that. Definitely. Guaranteed. <laughs> uh, I'm currently taking a break from Kendo for health, financial, and personal reasons. Uh, I do not intend to quit as I still have my goals in Kendo. What do you think I should do to keep my skills sharp? Uh, yes, I know a few people are either going to mock or laugh at me for this question. Uh, first off, anyone laughing or mocking you for this question is ke doing Kendo wrong. Uh, so don't do that if you're doing that. You, that's not cool. Um, it's none of your business, to be honest. Um... So, right. Um, okay. Well, yeah, fine. I mean, everyone has life, right? You know, um, and, you know, Kendo can't be everything to everyone. Um, and that's great that you don't intend to quit. I'm glad to hear that. Um, though if you do, that's, that's your decision. Um, the, there is a, there is a dilemma. It depends as to what extent you mean you're going to take a break or quit, right? Do you mean you're not going to touch a shinai? You're not going to, you're not even going to watch Kendall. You're not even going to, you're going to just take a break from using the word Kendall. <laughs> um, or are you just going to take a few months off from the dojo? It depends on what extent that is. If you're not going to have anything to do with Kendall, like you don't even want to watch Kendall videos online, then there's not a lot you can do to help keep your skills sharp. Depends on what level you're at. But, um, you know, if you sort of pass third Dan, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it too much. It's not like, you know, if you take a year or two off and then you come back, it's not like you're going to be back to being a beginner. You'll still have the skills there, but yeah, you'll probably need a while to get back, you know, get, get rid of the cobwebs. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot you can do if you don't want anything to do with Kendall for a bit. Um, if you're happy to watch a few videos, do something Toddy Yeko, that might help. It might. Um, if you're happy to do Saburi once a week, that'll help. That will definitely help. But if you're not, which is fine if you're not, then keeping your skills sharp might be a bit of a, bit of a, um, bit of a, a difficult thing. Because if we could keep our skill, if we could keep our skills sharp without training, we wouldn't really train that much, would we? So there's a trade-off there, all right? But I'm sure you'll make the right decision in whatever you do. Uh, and, you know, we look forward to welcoming you back into Kendall uh, when it's the right time for you. Uh, okay, next one. Oh, we're near the end. Uh, <laughs> hello again, Andy. Uh, given that you are a fairly well-known figure in the Kendall community, uh, have you ever had the opportunity to meet and perhaps Keiko with other well-known Kendall guy like uh, Hiro Imafuji from Kendall Guide or Alex Bennett from Kendall World? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really want to name drop too much. I've talked on here about uh, how Alec and I have uh, done kata demos before. Alec's a good friend of mine. Uh, we used to live in the same city. Uh, I used to see him a lot when I lived in Japan. Uh, I've done loads of cake with him. I've learned a lot from him. Uh, and he's he's not someone, just somebody that I consider a good friend, but he is someone that I really respect and look up to uh, as a kendoka, uh, as a role model, uh, and as a sensei. Um, is one of the treasures of uh, of Kendall, um, in both internationally and in Japan. Um, 
Imafuji Sensei, uh, I don't think I've met in person. We've had a few chats online. Um, you know, uh, we've never man managed to meet or, or uh, have uh, Ken Keiko, I don't think. Uh, I know we haven't done Kendo together. Um, I, I don't think we've met. Um, I, I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really like his content. So uh, go and check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Uh, Kench247, George McCall, a uh, really important friend of mine, <laughs> my senpai uh, as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, I practice with George a lot. Uh, if we're going to start name dropping. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, lots of lots of well-known Japanese players too. Uh, I'm not going to dra drop names there, but I think I have mentioned a few before, but yeah, um, I have, I've done a lot of, I, I know a lot of people. <laughs> Um, thankfully, I've had a very, very, very lucky experience in Kendo so far. Um, I'm wondering what the difference between Shizentai or Sageto is. Uh, the, they both mean standing relaxed with your sh Shinai down by your side, don't they? Fantastic question. This is a really good question. And I think it's something that probably confuses a lot of people because they're not the same thing, but they are very similar. So Shizentai means to stand naturally. All right, so when you just stood naturally with the shinai by your side um, or without shinai, <laughs> yeah, that's the shizentai posture. All right, just stood naturally, stood with your back straight, shoulders back, head straight, yeah, with your feet shoulder width apart, whatever. Not not quite shoulder width apart, but, you know, not in the kamai stance. Yeah, that's the shizentai posture, okay? Sageto means when you are holding the sword sort of at the, like, what do you call it? Like the position where it's not ready to use. So you have Taito, which is where you have the Shinai on your hip, ready to draw, and then you have Sageto, all right? So that's in reference, Shizentai is in reference to the body, and Sageto is in reference to the sword, yeah? Sage means to lower, and To is the sword. So, um they kind of happen at the same time. You do sageto from the shizentai posture, if that makes sense, okay? So that's the difference, all right? It's easily confused. But I, 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 think, I think I've explained that simply. <laughs> Hope so. Uh, hello, Andy. What's your experience and opinion about the intensity during keiko? Uh, it seems not so uncommon in other combat sports, boxing, wrestling, BJJ, etc etc. Uh, to do very light sparring to emphasize skill development. In Kendo, it seems there is emphasis to always go all out, uh, whether this be subidio or sparring thoughts. Um, that's a good question. I think this is the sort of thing that really separates Kendo from um, combat sports um, because um, the skill development in Kendo, part of it is that going all out, all right? Um, there is, a, there is space. There is space to break things down and go slowly. Yeah. We do that. There are times we do that. Um, at my dojo, we always practice Kirikaishi slowly, for example, um, as in the Zero to Shodan videos that I've done. Um, so there is, a, there, is, there is space for that. There definitely is space for that. It's not in Jigeko, though, right? So, like, doing the kind of... Um, light sparring I don't think has a massive benefit in Kendall um, because it's not for Kihon where you're practicing your waza your technique and sort of your muscle memory yes 100% Keiko Jigeko I don't think so because that's not what Jigeko is for um, I guess um I, just, I don't see it being so beneficial. It's not that Jigeko isn't to develop your technique. It's to um, it's to uh, put into practice. Um, well, it's it's to put into practice the purpose of Kendall whilst uh, being, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> this is a rabbit hole. Um, whilst also being under the pressure of someone else trying to strike you um and that means by executing your waza 
um, to the best of your ability uh, and to overcome your fears of being struck whilst also making um, correct, valid and bold strikes. Um... <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, it's somewhat like that anyway. Um, I don't think the kind of light sparring idea is really going to work in the way it works for the combat sports. But there are definitely modifications that you can do for things like that. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting thing. Uh, I probably need to give it a little bit more thought, but I don't see it being something that I'd integrate massively myself into a training regime. Okay, last one. Um, how long till you start preparations for your next test? What are your personal goals, goals to achieve seventh dan? Uh, I know there's a minimum wait time and I'm curious as to when you think you are ready to test. So, okay. Um, let's take this one at a time. I'm already preparing for seventh dan and it's very hard at the moment thanks to everything that's going on. But everything I do, Kendall wise, whether it's me Todi Yeko or all sorts of things is part of my preparation for seventh dan. Um, yeah, uh, to be honest. Um, my personal goal to achieve seventh dan, of course, is to pass it first time and I'd like to pass it in Japan. Um, I, I did my sixth down in France, which was fantastic, great experience. Um, but I really want to, I want to do it in Japan um, because um, there's nothing, nothing wrong with not doing it in Japan, by the way, at all. I don't, I don't think it's worth more or less doing it in Japan or not. But the reason I want to do it in Japan is because um, it's a diff. I, I've never done that level of grading in Japan, like the national level grading. I did the fifth dan in Japan, um, but it's a much smaller type grading than the seventh dan. And if and when I eventually do pass seventh dan, I intend to challenge eighth dan ten years after that. And you can only do that in Japan. So if I can't do the seventh dan in that environment in Japan, then I don't think I have the chance to the eighth dan. So that's that's the reason I want to do the seventh dan uh, in Japan. Um, I don't know though, uh, it's an extremely difficult test. Um, it's extremely difficult. Uh, sixth dan, sixth dan was the first, uh, test that I took where I didn't feel, not didn't feel, but I didn't know if I was good enough for the, for the grade. Um, in terms of, I didn't know if the kendo, kendo I was doing was representing sixth dan kendo. Apparently it was, but, um, I didn't know that myself yet. I had an idea. I thought I had a good chance. That's why I tried. But I wasn't certain of it. When I did my fifth dan, I knew that the kendo I was doing was good enough for fifth dan. What I was concerned about is whether I would be able to express that on the day, especially as I was doing this in Kumamoto, where there's some really, my age, there's some really strong players um, who could just destroy me. Um, so I was concerned about that. Luckily, that didn't happen. But um, I feel the same for seventh dan at the moment, of course. But I'm only a couple of years into sixth dan, so I don't know how I feel in another few years, another four years time. Um, but yeah, um, in terms of when you think you're ready to test, I don't know. Um, hmm, it's difficult. Uh, like I say, up to fifth dan, I was quite confident of how ready I was I knew I, I knew that you know even when I went for my sixth down I knew I had a good chance but I wasn't sure if I was quite at the stage or whether there was some small sort of alterations that I needed to make in the in the way I was approaching my cake hole but it turned out that I was on the right track um because after <clears throat> I'd say after fifth down especially um, it becomes more about how you're interacting with your opponent um, than it does in any of the other grades. And it does, like from fourth down, it becomes about that. It becomes about that. But from sixth down upwards, it's like only about that. <laughs> um, so it's very difficult. And it's, it's also very difficult because um, when you start challenging those higher grades, it's much harder to set the barometer as to 
where you are sort of on that path. You know, um, when I was going for fifth dan in Japan, like everybody my age was already fifth dan or higher. Yeah. Um, people a bit younger than me were fourth dan. Yeah. So I was practicing with peers or people who were a bit older, a bit, a bit higher. Sorry. Um, when I went for, when I was going for sixth dan, then like, okay. In Japan at that stage, my kendo changed a lot. Um, in the sort of few years running before I came back to the UK, uh, because I, I, I became very much more of a teacher, <clears throat> especially of kids. So I didn't get as much chance, but I did get the chance to practice with lots of seventh dance senses and eighth dance senses when I wanted to almost. And then I moved back to the UK and then I got my sixth dance quite soon after coming back to the UK. And now it's very different. And like my opportunity to practice with those sort of other people that have passed the test that are seventh dan um, or higher eighth dan is much, much less frequent than it was before. So that sort of marker of where where I am uh, is difficult to gauge. Um, added to the fact that my body's growing older, all right? So my body is not capable of what it was when I took my fifth dan exam, yeah? For example. Um. <clears throat> it moves in a different way. But I believe that I'm better at Kendall now than I was when I took my fifth dan. So that's where there's a bit of a weird paradox going on there. Um, so yeah, it's hard to know when. Uh, one of the things I do intend to do, and I know I'm rambling now and I'm going to finish this up now because I know we've been going on a long time. But um, one of the things I do intend to do is as soon as it's possible, and I've talked about this before, I want to I want to enter the Kyoto Taiga. It's one of the biggest ambitions of my Kendo life uh, anyway, which is the huge uh, exhibition matches that happen in Kyoto every year in Golden Week. You have to be uh, Denshi, uh, sixth dan to enter, uh, and you get paired with other people of a similar age and, and same grade as you. Uh, and you get like a, a, a two minute match. It's You just get one match. Uh, and it's just like, it, it's shi it's so the points are called out. Um, at least uh, in the Denshi and Kyoshi Nobu. So um, it's a bit different, but at the same time, it's it's a display match. So you're not, it's not, it's not a tournament. There's no winner uh, of the whole tournament. Yeah. Um, so it's the closest thing to a simulated grading that I'll get because it'll be somebody, it'll be a peer that I'll be having this sort of competitive interaction with. Um, and I intend to uh, participate in that. I was I was hoping to do it this year. Don't think it's going. It's not going to happen because this year's been cancelled. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to join it from next year, and I'll be able to get a few goes at it before I actually have to have the chance to challenge seventh dan, and then I'll have a better idea of t as to whether I'm on the right track or not. <laughs> and we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see because who knows? You know, I could get I could get an all Japan champion in that and I wouldn't get them in the grading so who knows we don't know all right um it, it, it's all a big journey that has sort of random things crop up in it but all we have to do is keep trying um advice to anyone else out there that's test looking at grading whether it's for first dan or for fifth dan um if you're unsure as to whether you're ready to test or not, I recommend you try the test and then you'll get an idea as to, as to where you sit. If if you pass, then this is what I did with my sixth dan. I wasn't sure, you know. I mean, I was I was confident, <clears throat> but I wasn't sure, yeah. Um, so I knew that even if I didn't make make it, because the pass rate for sixth dan is quite low, I knew that the chances are that I wasn't going to make it statistically, right? Um, so... But I knew that if I if I did it and I, even if I failed, I knew that I would have a better idea afterwards as to what I needed to do. All right. So that's a really important role that gradings play in your kendo as well. So you must do it. You must try that. OK, that's it. Thank you for joining me today. I know it's been a long one and um, I've got to get back to work. <laughs> um, don't forget to shop at Kendo Star. Keep me on the on the shop floor shipping orders out, all right? And that'll keep the camera rolling, keep us in business, keep these videos coming, and make sure that I see you next time. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.